Hi everyone and a very warm welcome from the UK to today's online service. I'm Stephen and this is my wife Shahana and we're part of the leadership team of senior pastors Wes and Adriana Richards at King's Church International in Windsor. And as always we give a very special welcome to everyone from King's Church International in Windsor, in London and in South Africa and to everyone joining us from around the UK and other nations. Today's programme continues our series on the Ten Commandments. This week we're focusing on the commandment, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. And Pastor Wes will be speaking about how important it is to always speak well of others. And we are also so excited to see that our women's conference is coming up. The annual women's conference is something that has always blessed me personally. And it is going to be a special time for all women to come together this year as women of light. And we are going to see a special feature about this today. Yes, I'm sure it's going to be a powerful time. Lots of great things to look forward to and to receive from uh, today's programme. But first, let's just pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you want us to be the light in this world. And we thank you that you want us to guide us in every area of our lives. Today, we come with open hearts and open minds as we put our trust in you. Help us to always speak positively and well of others. Come, Holy Spirit, and speak to us in today's programme. Amen. Amen. Now let's worship the Lord together. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Break every stronghold Shine through the shadows Over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus 
Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Galatians 3 verse 8 to 10 But now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Titus 3 verses 1 to 5 Remind the people to be subject to the rulers and authorities, to be obedient, and to be ready to do whatever is good. To slander no one, to be peaceful and considerate, and to always be gentle towards everyone. Colossians 4 verses 5 to 6 Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. 
Hi ladies, we are really looking forward to seeing you at our Women's Conference 2023, Women of Light. And this is going to be a powerful time of blessing and restoration for every woman who attends. And we want to share the encouraging stories of what God has done in the lives of other ladies to inspire you about what God wants to do in your life through this conference too. So let's hear from these wonderful ladies now. God has transformed my life and brought healing to my heart, removing pain from the past. The Lord increased my faith in my identity as a leader. God restored my eyesight after I went blind. It was a miracle. Healed my heart from past hurts. He's brought hope to me and my family and continues to restore my life. He gave me a whole new direction in my career when I was unfairly treated at work. God has helped to remove anxiety from my life. God healed my heart from grief and from fear. God provided me with peace and comfort in a difficult time in my life. God has brought healing to my family. After a great loss, he has given us new life through a son. <laughs> the Lord has shown me what my purpose is in life and he has given me peace and joy in every situation. God really helped me during a time I was transitioning into single parenthood. And during that time, he gave me so much strength and light and motivation to keep going. He gave me a purpose when I didn't know what to do with my life. God freed me from self-loathing, from fear and anxiety. God has made me secure in my identity as a daughter of God. I'm so grateful to the Lord because he rescued my marriage. He has restored my self-image, helped me to understand my uniqueness and purpose in life. I was feeling quite lost and lonely, but the Lord did a deep work in my heart and gave me peace. God showed me his unconditional love and acceptance, and this has changed my life. To fill me with new joy and make me radiant so that I can really shine as a woman of light in the world. To bring health back to our family. To give me new energy and strength. To help me to have success in my job. To make my next steps clear. To make me a woman of light who shines to others. To let me see myself the way that he sees me. To give me a supernatural experience with him because I want to know him more. To remove all the fears about my future and my family's future. To bring complete freedom from my past. To restore my family. To really let me feel his love. To show me how to enjoy my life to the max. To guide me in my decisions to let me really feel his love. To give me the desire of my heart. To help me to be a better mom to my two girls. To bring his light into my home. To teach me how to do his will all of my life. To guide me in all the decisions that I make. To do a miracle in my finances. I would like God to bring healing to my body. So just like these women, I invite you to come and receive all that the Lord has in store for you at this time. We'll be hearing from our special guest speaker, Pastor Johanna Castellanos, as well as other great leaders. Pastor Adriana from King's Church International is looking forward to hosting you all as we meet online on Friday evening, the 24th of March, and in person at Bailey's House in Slough on Saturday, the 25th of March. So book on today and invite other women to be a part of this special conference as well. See you there. Hello everyone and a special greeting to all of you good and faithful people of King's Church International in Robertson, South Africa. Today I have a somewhat unusual title. It's called Stop Talking Like Prince Harry. Britain's Prince Harry has written a new memoir called Spare. It sold more than 3.2 million copies worldwide after just one week of publication and in all likelihood it will rank among the best-selling memoirs of all time. One of the reasons for this, of course, is that he spills the dirt, as they say, on Britain's royal family. His book reveals his criticisms of his father, his stepmother, his brother, 
and his sister-in-law. He makes a number of accusations that may or may not be true, since, as the late Queen said, recollections may vary. Consequently, and unsurprisingly, his negative words have caused great hurt and division and may have damaged family relationships beyond repair. All this is very sad, tragic actually, and shows, as the Bible says in James chapter 3, verse 5, how a tongue is like a small spark that can ignite a great fire. Words matter and they have great power to build or to destroy, whether they come from the lips of a prince or from our own mouths. For we too each have to choose whether we will speak in a way that builds up or tears down. The Bible has a great deal to say about guarding our mouths and telling the truth. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Proverbs 13.3 says, He who guards his mouth protects his life, but the one who opens his lips invites his own ruin. Proverbs 21.23 says, He who guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from distress. Today, as we continue our series on the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions, remember, we come to the Ninth Commandment, which focuses on how we speak. We read in Exodus 20, 16, that God commands that you shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. This is often shortened to, you shall not lie. And while this is true, it does not give the full picture of what this commandment is saying, for it covers a wider application of not speaking falsely about anyone or anything. Not speaking falsely means that you must not give a false or incorrect account. You must not lie about another person. You must not speak in such a way that gives you an incorrect and damaging picture of another person. You must not gossip about another person. You must tell the truth. Exodus 23, 1-3 expands on this. It says, you shall not spread a false report. You shall not join hands with a wicked man to be a malicious witness. You shall not fall in with the many to do evil, nor shall you bear witness in a lawsuit, siding with the many so as to pervert justice. The Bible contains a number of warnings against false witnesses who lie and spread false reports. For a person who had a charge brought against them and were brought before a religious prosecution, the charge was considered to be established only on the evidence of two or three sworn witnesses. In cases where false testimony was suspected, the religious judges were to make a thorough investigation. And if false testimony were proven, the false witness was to receive the punishment that he or she had intended to bring on the person falsely accused. For example, since murder was a capital crime, giving false testimony in a murder case was subject to the death penalty. Those eager to receive or listen to false testimony were also subject to punishment. Speaking in a false and uh, untrue way against someone then is a really big deal. I want us to look a little further into this. First of all, it's a big deal because God hates lying and false testimony. God is a holy God. He is a God of truth and justice. It is impossible for him to lie. There is nothing devious, dark or underhanded about him. Satan, however, is the complete opposite. Jesus said of the devil in John 8:44. The devil was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Revelation 10 verse 12 amplified speaks of the devil as the accuser of our believing brothers and sisters who accuses them and keeps bringing the charges of sinful behavior against them before our God day and night. Lying, therefore, is a work of the devil. So if you lie or speak falsely about someone, 
you're actually doing the devil's work. When you unjustly accuse someone and damage their good name, you have become a spokesman or spokeswoman for the kingdom of darkness. Now, some religious people may think that to badmouth someone really isn't so important when compared with other sins, but you would be very wrong. For God is not indifferent to any of this. In fact, he hates it. Proverbs 12, 22 says this, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal faithfully are his delight. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19 famously tells of seven things that God totally detests. These are haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies. God hates this and one who sows discord among the brothers. The message version puts it like this. Here are six things that God hates, and one more that he loathes with the passion. Eyes that are arrogant, a tongue that lies, hands that murder the innocent, a heart that hatches evil plots, feet that race down a wicked track, a mouth that lies under oath, a troublemaker in the family. So if you've lied or gossiped about anyone or listened to other people's negative talk behind people's back, you need to understand just how displeasing this is to the Lord. So then, first of all, breaking the ninth command is a big deal because God hates lying and false testimony. Secondly, it is also a big deal because lying and false testimony is very destructive. First of all, it's very destructive to individuals, starting with you personally. For lying and false testimony will erode your conscience, since the more you do it, the less you will worry about it. Lying and false testimony will ruin your character, since you will become a more unfaithful person who doesn't care about doing right. And not least, lying and false testimony will block your relationship with God. Psalm 101 verse 7 says, No one who practices deceit shall dwell in my house. No one who utters lies shall continue before my eyes. Psalm 24, 2-3, Who will ascend into the hill of the Lord? and Who will stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false, and who does not swear deceitfully. Not only is false speech damaging to the person who gossip, gossips, it also poisons those who listen to it, which is why you should take care to distance yourself from those who want to tell you about other people's faults and criticize them. And for sure, it is destructive to the one who's on the receiving end of negative words. Sadly, significant numbers of people have suffered depression or even taken their lives because they just could not take any more verbal assaults. Psychologytoday.com reported, many serious cases of bullying begin with a false accusation. Kids and adults alike have become victims of relentless bullying. In one major lawsuit against a high school in Washington, the parents of a boy are suing because they allege the school failed to protect him from months of relentless bullying that began with a false accusation by an ex-girlfriend that he once hit her arm and pushed her. Lying and false testimony then is very destructive to individuals personally, but also it's very destructive to leaders. The kingdom of darkness does not want any kind of authority so that there can be disorder and chaos. Criticism and negative speech is one of the most commonly used weapons in Satan's armory against leaders. So many leaders, both political leaders and spiritual leaders, have suffered because of non-stop criticism. Margaret Thatcher, Britain's first women prime minister and longest serving British prime minister in the 20th century, was toppled from power not by the votes of the electorate, but because of the constant backbiting and plots from colleagues. 
Moses, one of the greatest figures of history who led Israel from the slavery of Egypt, conquered the plagues of Egypt, but had a very tough job trying to overcome the plague of constant gossip that came against him. It says in Exodus 16:2, in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And not only did they grumble and complain, but they did it in such a self-righteous, spiritually sounding way. Verse three continues, the Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, where we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted as if. But you brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. This gossip got so bad that actually they spoke of stoning them. But what was even worse for Moses was that even his family, in particular his brother and sister, started to criticize him. They criticized him about his wife and they said, well, you know, you hear from God, but we do too. They knew Moses was called and anointed by God, but they also felt that they were qualified to criticize him. And that became very destructive. Such attitudes and speech can also be destructive to churches. A church remains strong, any church, when there is faithful speech towards the pastors, the leaders and the members. But a church is weakened when a culture of criticism comes in. I read this shocking statement by the late Sir Fred Catherwood in his book on the Ten Commandments called First Things First. He wrote this, Gossip is the curse of most churches. Wow, that is quite a statement. And if it is true, it's no wonder that the church and local churches don't make the difference in the world that they should. So Fred added, it seems so harmless, but how much good does gossip do? He says, gossip about other people is aimed to reduce their reputation and raise our own. Everybody has their faults. It does no good at all to us or to anyone else if we spend our time in taking friends and acquaintances to pieces. Now, when this church started almost 80 years ago, 80 years ago actually this year, my late father, Pastor Billy Richards, at the beginning insisted on the values of the church. And one of the core values, he said, that there would be no gossip amongst the members of the church. There would just be a loyalty to one another. And all these years later, let's continue to be a church that always aims for the highest standards of speech and has zero tolerance for dishonoring words. But also we see about lying and false testimony that it is destructive to whole communities and nations. So many people throughout history have suffered violence and death simply because of people telling lies. It may be just one lie, but it can have devastating consequences. <clears throat> In the deep south of the United States, many racial injustices took place simply because people felt free to make unfounded accusations against black people. On August the 28th, 1955, a 14-year-old boy by the name of Emmett Till was gruesomely lynched uh, in the small town of Money, Mississippi. He was actually a boy from Chicago visiting relatives, and he'd just gone into a small rural grocery store to buy some bubble gum. Behind the counter was Carolyn Bryan. She was said to be a strikingly beautiful 21-year-old Mississippi woman. But she said that the teenager, the young teenager, teenager had sexually assaulted her. Because of her words, this 14-year-old boy was snatched away in the middle of the night from his family, tortured and killed. But 50 years later, civil rights historian Tim Tyson, who has written a book called The Blood of Emmett Till, says that Carolyn Bryant told him that she had lied that day in court. It was not true. The lies of this one woman 
not only resulted in the death of an innocent boy, but also in many more deaths that were sparked by the civil rights campaign that grew up against this injustice. Words matter. Truth matters. In August 1947, so many lies and false stories of atrocity inflamed passions when India was divided into two independent states, Muslim majority Pakistan and Hindu majority India. And in the sectarian violence that ensued, two million people were killed. Tens of thousands of women were abused and abducted. Homes were plundered and villages were torched. Words matter. Truth matters. In the middle of the 14th century, the Jews in Europe were wrongly accused of causing the so-called Black Death Plague because they poisoned wells, so it was said. And as a result of people believing and spreading what was a total lie, nearly, listen to this, 100,000 Jews were burnt alive in Germany and Austria alone. Hitler's Holocaust was made possible because the Nazis were experts at telling lies and smearing the Jewish people. People were quick to accept Hitler's lies as if they were absolute truths. They were willing to believe that the so-called protocols of the elders of Zion, which peddled the myth of the Jews having a secret plan to rule the to, to rule the world. It was an entirely fictitious document published by a Russian mystic, but so many people believed it and it paved the way for the death of six million Jews. Once more, words matter, truth matters. And all this is not to say that the Jewish people uh, themselves, or some at least, were not have not been without fault. For instance, while we believe in the spiritual and the moral and the legal right of the nation of Israel to exist, it is a matter of record that in the lead up to the War of Independence in 1948, a key part of the Jewish plan to establish a state was to frighten as many Arabs as possible to move elsewhere by what was caused, called a whisper campaign of actual or potential atrocities. Consequently, it is estimated that between 300,000 to 400,000 people fled their homes. Once more, words matter. Truth matters. Now, Christians of all uh, people should know just how important it is not to bear false witness. For it was because of the testimony of false witnesses who actually couldn't agree on their stories that the case was made to crucify our Lord Jesus. He who was the way, the truth and the life was put to death on the basis of lies. Lies that so-called religious people were happy to spread. And so we come to our final point, and which is that lying and false testimony will be judged by God. People may think they get away with it, but they will not. We see different examples of this in the Bible. In 1 Kings chapter 21, Ahab and Jezebel, he was a king, remember, and queen, they were judged because they recruited false witnesses to seize Nabal's vineyard and have him killed. And in the New Testament, in the midst of a great move of the Holy Spirit in the early church, Acts 5 tells us, that Ananias and his wife Sapphira both dropped dead after they were confronted for lying to the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 19 verse 9 says this, A false witness will not go unpunished, and whoever pours out lies will perish. Revelation 21 verse 8 says, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. 
Revelation 22, 14 and 15. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates uh, into the city or in the New Jerusalem. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters, that's quite a list, and listed is, and whoever loves and practices a lie. So all this is pretty serious stuff, showing us that why we should be very careful to obey the ninth commandment. For sooner or later, God will judge those who lie and bear false witness. So, where does this leave us all? Well, first of all, if you are guilty, if any of us are guilty of breaking this commandment, the first thing is this, there must be repentance. You must repent. Repent, we know, means to turn around, to stop what you're doing, to go in another way. In other words, stop lying, stop gossiping about people and painting them in a bad light. Apologize to the Lord and, where possible, to the people that you have damaged. Turn your back on this sinful way of speaking. Colossians 3, verses 9 to 10 says this, Do not lie to one another. See that you put off the old self with its practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Also, not only repent, but seek to resolve any issues in a godly way. Now, if you have a problem with someone, don't talk about them and talk to people who may also be against them, but go and talk to the individuals concerned and do it with a good attitude. As Jesus said in Matthew 18, 15 and 16, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. And if they listen to you, you've won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony, here we go again, of two or three witnesses. In other words, try to get reconciled, try to get the truth out, speak the truth as the Bible says, in love. And if you have a problem with a leader, then go to the leadership group responsible for the spiritual oversight of the church. 1 Timothy 5.19 says, do not listen to an accusation against an elder and let it, unless it is confirmed by two or three witnesses. And not least, make a decision today to speak, always speak positively and not negatively. Ephesians 4.25 says this, Therefore each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbour, for we are all members of one body. And Ephesians 4.29 adds, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, so that it may benefit those who listen. Well, if we live and speak this way, for sure we will have a blessed life. As 1 Peter 3 verse 10 puts it, For as the scripture says, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, Keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Let's pray. Let's take a moment together, maybe to get right with God. Let's come and ask for his forgiveness and for his cleansing. Maybe you could pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, please clean up my heart and my mouth. Please forgive me for all my wrong words, my bad attitudes, my bitterness. Help me always to follow in your ways and to speak only words of truth and of love. I ask this in your name. Amen. Well, when we really sincerely pray like this, I mean, the Lord's going to change us. He will, for sure, he will hear us and he will come into our lives. You, you'll find that bitterness leaving you and a sweetness and a happiness and a peace coming in. Let your life and your speech be formed by daily reading of the Bible and daily prayer. And also be sure to be part of a Christian community where together with brothers and sisters, you can all learn 
to speak positively to one another. And before I go, I'd like you all to repeat with me the words of Psalm 19 and verse 14. Maybe close your eyes one more time and repeat this. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. And now I pray, Heavenly Father, for your help in all the things that we have spoken about here. We pray for your direction and we pray for your protection. Change our hearts, Lord, because we know it's out of the heart, what's in our heart that the mouth speaks. Help us, Lord, to speak positively always so that we can be a great blessing to our families, to the church, to our groups that we are part of. And we could be a great blessing in our communities that we don't stir up conflict, we don't pass on bad reports, but we actually bring help and healing. We calm things down. We bring the rule of Jesus. And help us, Lord, in our nations, that the way we speak to one another, the way we speak about people, will be an evidence that we are followers of Jesus Christ. And so we pray, Lord, touch our mouths, as it were, from a live coal of fire, Lord, from your presence. Purify us. Help us, Lord, not just to hear this word, but to radically change the culture of our lives, of our families, churches and communities, that we may bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus. We ask all this in that wonderful name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Then 
joining us today. If you have any prayer requests, please contact us at hello at kcionline.org. Or for more information about our church, please visit our website at kcionline.org. To stay connected with us, please go to kcionline.org forward slash connect. Or if you would like to find out more about giving, please go to kcionline.org forward slash giving. And to listen to all our services, go to kcionline.org forward slash podcast or simply download the KCI app on the App Store. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel of King's Church International and our senior pastors, Wes and Adriana Mitchell. We welcome you to join us again every Sunday at 5pm UK time. God bless you.